So we have an interesting question. Yeah. I, I yeah. think this is this is kind of a heady question. It's kind of heady. Very, very multidimensional. <clears throat> and it's from Jeremy in the recovery community. What's up, Jay? All right, Jeremy. He's a friend of mine. Okay. Uh, and he wants to know, what type of results uh, do we see from uh, poly abusers that are on Suboxone for opiates? It's opiate uh, you know, addiction. Right. So poly abuser, meaning obviously, I guess people don't, maybe they don't know, but that's somebody who just will pretty much take anything, you know, mm -hmm. somebody, whatever the drug is, they're, they're going to use it. <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. They might have a favorite, maybe opiates are their favorites, mm -hmm. but they smoke pot too. They take benzos. Maybe they drink other yeah, things. Across the board. Yeah. Trash can heads is what we used to call it back in the day. Yeah. Back in so, the day. Back in the day. Yep. Well, um, and I guess the, the kind of cut it, cutting in what the question is, you know, is... And there's a little bit of controversy about, you know, hey, this buprenorphine or Suboxone or whatever, is this really, you know, it doesn't seem to be really helping. Mm -hmm. You know, I see somebody who's, you know, taking the Suboxone and here they're also doing something else. So it's all baloney. And they're buying a lot of it off the street, too. So yeah. some of it's, you know, illicit anyway. <clears throat> um, but so so the way we, we looked at this question, we can mm -hmm. dissect it, right? So what's what's the what's the real meat here? And I think the meat is 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 Suboxone an effective treatment mm -hmm. for uh, opiate users who take other drugs, right? And you know I, I'll come in with the um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the side of a lot of twelve step people. Mm -hmm. You know I, I don't necessarily believe this, but I'm gonna we're gonna play a role here, and I get a lot of this sort of. Uh, backlash against mm -hmm. it saying that you know people are nodding out in meetings and they buy it on the street and they're yeah. not really in recovery at all you know all, yeah. all that stuff mm -hmm. you know as if it's all, like a, a total just harm reduction and, and not therapeutic at right. all right right and there's certainly some of that out there and, and even you know about the diversion on the street an interesting study was done uh, mm -hmm. here in Baltimore looking at what happens when somebody buys you know um, you know illicitly buys buprenorphine you know off the streets mm. <clears throat> and as it turns out those folks are more likely to go on and be in recovery really well, I why wonder, would you, I, I think about it why would you buy why would you buy buprenorphine off the streets if if you you buy because you didn't want to buy the heroin well either that you know, or you don't so want someone to get... has a that's true yeah yeah so somebody is trying you know kind of to do it on their own to wean off or space space between and and it's just really hard to find you know prescribers for buprenorphine who take insurance you yeah. know affordable you know affordable treatment um so even there you know i mean it's, that, the harm reduction is kind of you know sort of an interesting way to look at it <clears throat> but i think the evidence is really really clear this is there's not there's not much room for doubt about the effectiveness of buprenorphine for uh opioid addiction mm -hmm. you know. so how does the poly abuse factor fit in because because <clears throat> so you know like at Colmac we use Suboxone mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh, we also combine that with you know pretty intense therapy right mm -hmm. psychotherapy for two months and then you know for intensive outpatient and then for you know long periods of time mm -hmm. for aftercare mm -hmm. yeah uh, we ask people to go to meetings we mm -hmm. ask people to see individual therapists yeah. when needed so there's a lot of therapy going on. There's a lot right? of structure, you know, accountability with the drug screens and this kind of thing. And, so and, th um, that's helpful. That's but, helpful. But, you know, you, you get a lot of people, like you were saying, you know, who really, are they are they recovering <clears throat> if they're uh, buying it? Let's say they get it from a legitimate source, but they're still smoking pot, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. so is, is there any ev evidence to show that people who are taking Suboxone purely to not use opiates, mm -hmm. But are still using other drugs. Is there is there evidence to show that it is a successful? Well, they're medium? less well, they're less likely to die. So that's that's the the evidence is there's a more you know mortality benefit or, or you know mm. uh, less less mortality. That's definitely a benefit. <clears throat> but but if you're looking at recovery itself, mm -hmm. then you really the the important thing is that people um, find other ways to deal with the stresses that life offers. It, you know, ways that are different than using pot, cocaine, alcohol as a as a coping mechanism. So, so, so here's here's a question that I'll ask you, and this will maybe hopefully answer some people's mm -hmm. some other people's questions because I get this one too, mixed into this. It's that um, are people able to develop those coping skills? Are mm -hmm. they able like are they able to do that while <clears throat> on Suboxone? Because you know, hey, Suboxone is a drug. 
Mm -hmm. And how can you recover if you're taking a drug? Well, you know, it, 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 back if you go back in the day, people used to say the same thing about antidepressants. Mm -hmm. You know, the, oh, you mean someone, in twelve-step rooms? Yeah, yeah, or, they or did. even outside. You know, it's like you're really not yourself with an antidepressant, and it's just it turns out you really are yourself. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're, more you're yourself. More, you know? I was going to say, you know, and I, I can more just, yourself. you know, it, and again, this. There's really substantial literature to support this, you know, so uh, research literature, so that's very clear. And, and also just my experience. You know, I, I, you know, treated hundreds of people with buprenorphine, and I've seen folks go from, you know, really struggling in life to, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, getting substantial jobs or finishing school, getting married, having children, going, you know, kind of marching through life mm -hmm. in what would be a very normal, res you know, respectable way. Mm -hmm. um, and would, would I say that somehow those people aren't, you know, thriving? You know, that somehow Suboxone is holding them back? Right, if yeah. you define it through this one <clears throat> narrow parameter, mm -hmm. right, which is what, unfortunately what many people do, you know. Yeah, well the abstinence is, you know, we've always said abstinence is not the same thing as recovery. No, and that goes both directions. You know, I mean, abstinence is not the same thing as recovery. Yeah, you could you could be a dry drunk, mm -hmm. or you could be, uh, you know, yeah. taking that taking suboxone and not doing any recovery work, work at all. Yeah, and and there's people out there. There's folks that you know they're probably nodding because they had I don't know some Xanax or something. Right. In addition to that, you know, I mean, they didn't the, just take buprenorphine. There may there may be some truth in the idea that hey, this guy is he look it looks like he's high. He's not he's not really you know making sense in, in the meeting. Well, probably is. Not making sense because he's high. Yeah, and, you know that, that, that's the real issue. But it's not the it's not the buprenorphine. I would I would bet it's probably some other things that are going on, mm -hmm. and that needs to be managed. So so real quick, and then we can wrap this up because I know we're this is longer than normal, right? But so it seems to me that so so if Suboxone will get somebody to uh, basically a state of homeostasis if mm -hmm. taken as directed, correct? Mm -hmm. If they're still abusing other drugs. That means they're just really not ready to accept how they feel because the people that I've worked with on Suboxone still get anxious. They still go to jobs and get mm -hmm. nervous. They still have all the stuff of life, mm -hmm. right? And then fights with the boyfriend, yeah. girlfriend. Kind of, yeah. all, all the triggers that made them get high before are back. And the Suboxone is not really getting them high. It's just allowing them to be at a level playing field where they can develop these mm -hmm. skills. Mm -hmm. So people who are not doing well as poly abusers are really probably not you know, willing to sit through that discomfort Suboxone or not, right? I, you know, willing. Really... Now, see, that's a tough word. And again, uh -oh. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge you on that okay. because that that means that people who aren't in recovery now are not in because they don't really, really want it. No, but you have to be willing to sit through some pain. You know that? Yeah, I, I, I would say that um, there's a degree of ambivalence in most people that are using. They kind of know it's not a good idea and they want to stop mm -hmm. and they also kind of you know feel like it, it it's not possible right now because of x y and z you know it's like oh this is the wrong week to you know stop sniffing glue or something like that you know mm -hmm. and uh, but I, I think that you know a, working with a kind of a comprehensive treatment program uh, that has the the therapy and mm. you know medications and the, the attending to you know like psychiatric problems all you know kind of the wrap around right that, the uh, person may may have some issues <clears throat> that he can't control maybe he has yeah. major anxiety issues yeah so i think you know she, that then you can work with that positive part of the ambivalence mm -hmm. so that people can understand yeah well maybe i i can do more than i think i can do you gotcha. know okay and and so you know i i i, I I worry when you're hearing like, oh, you don't really want this so much, that that's, that's kind of giving up on someone. And I think right. that's, you know, for me, I, I, I don't want to give up on, on anybody. You know, Jeremy, I, you know, so I don't think you do either. You know, if you're in the recovery community, you don't, you know, you know wear that badge just because, you, you, you know, if you don't care. You know, so. Unfortunately, and, and the, I, you know, the reason I use the, that word is because that is a recovery community mm -hmm. word. Mm -hmm. You know, in in, in twelve-step rooms, and this maybe this is just my experience, but often the person is seen as somebody who's not ready yet, mm -hmm. right? They're not ready for recovery yet. They're not there yet. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that that they have to make themselves ready, and no one can kind of guide or assist them. And it doesn't mean that 
they can't be in part of a treatment program that can help them along the way. No, definitely. You know? and, and yeah, and if they just put their faith in mm -hmm. the system of recovery, mm -hmm. I think they'll find that forward yeah. motion does happen. Yeah, and sometimes getting somebody on buprenorphine, just getting rid of like the most dangerous, clearly the, the most mm -hmm. dangerous of uh, you know the substance they're involved with, kind of tie them into an organization in some way. That and, and that organization is one that's not just a you know fly by night you know kind of shoot someone through some hallways in a rickety house. Yeah, and, that is and, not. You know, that is you know, not the, the, recovery. Yeah, but like a real legitimate place that then you can kind of work on that ambivalence. It's like, hey, well, let's let's look at the marijuana use. I mean, this is, mm -hmm. you know, this really what you want to do, you know, is this how you want to deal with stress or you want to try something different, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know. But, That's a, I just had that conversation with a guy a week ago mm -hmm. who yeah. came in just for his opiate disorder mm -hmm. and smoked pot every day, yeah. three or four times a day. Mm -hmm. When we talked about it, he didn't really see it until he, until I, talked about coping mechanisms and the negative symptoms of smoking pot. Yeah, sometimes it just it takes a bit of time for people to come around and, and um, yeah, and, and it requires the, a treatment organization or, or, or treatment system to continually have hope that people will come around. Mm -hmm. Hope for them. Yeah. yeah. That was good. That was a little that was long like a, answer to a short question. It was like a meal. I'm <laughs> stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for Thanksgiving. I am. This marshmallow wants to eat. <laughs> All right. I think we've done enough. We've done enough damage for sure. All, All right. right. I'm Doc. And I'm Rock. All right. Take care. See you next time. Okay. <laughs>